Bowman here from BW1.com. The HTC Thunderbolt is the first 4G handset on the Horizon Wireless Network. It's going to be the standard amongst how all 4G handsets are going to be mentioned in the future and how good 4G is going to be with Horizon. And I'm going to give you my review. So the first thing we're going to do is actually start off with sort of a hardware tour. One of the first things you automatically notice here is a large screen, 4.3 inch screen diagonally with a resolution of 480 by 800 so images are nice and clear and sharp on here. Below that, you see the touch sensitive buttons, your standard home, menu, back, and search buttons. On the top here, you have your earpiece and a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera for video chat. On the bottom, you have a mic port. On this side, you have a volume rocker. Right here, you have your power button. You have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You have your micro USB port here. On the back, you actually have a kickstand right here at the bottom. And right beneath that kickstand is the speaker. And then right here we actually have an 8 megapixel camera with a LED flash and 720p video recording. It's kind of annoying there wasn't a dedicated camera button for this. You had to go into the software to use it. So it's a little kind of one extra step you need to do instead of just hitting that button if you want that quick, quick picture. But what I'm going to show you here right now is how well the 720p video and the pictures really look. dog and running right towards me hello as you can see there you get a lot of options with the camera the camera looks really good videos look good on it uh, pictures look good on it as well too check the link in the description for all the pictures you can see the app allows you to use the same filters not only within the um, pictures you're also able to use it in the video as well too which is a pretty cool feature that I really do like in it and it's all within the same application you know we've seen some phones that don't and devices don't like to kind of do that there and we'll take a look here behind the battery door, which I found it kind of difficult to take the battery door off here. As you can see with the battery door, if I take the battery out here at the bottom, you will see that um, this is where your micro SD card goes into. And actually down here is where the SIM card slot is. It actually slides up just like that because with LTE, with Verizon, you get to use SIM cards. So that's pretty much it for the hardware aspect of everything. So the next thing we're going to actually do here is we're going to turn it back on and we're going to go, th go through the software a bit. One thing I forgot to mention during the hardware tour is that the battery life is about one and a half to one day, one to one and a half days rather with the 1400 milliamp hour battery. Um, depending if you're using a lot of 4G, if you're using a 4G data, it's always going to last less than a day. But if you're just using moderate to, to light use, you're probably going to get a day to a day and a half of battery life. And also, the, this, this particular model here that Verizon sent to us for review, we've got to thank Verizon for that. It is, does have a 32 gigabyte storage card already built inside of it. So let's take a quick look at the software here. And now normally I would be sitting at a table kind of showing you going through the software and stuff like that. But this is HTC Sense. You, you've seen this before on plenty of the Android devices. This, is, this does have Android 2.2.1 already inside of it. As you can see here, the software is pretty fast with the one gigahertz Snapdragon processor that's inside of it. Um, you have your standard sort of overlay here of HTC Sense, friend stream, favorite, you know, clock widget. You have your standard software menu right here, stuff that you've seen in HTC Sense before. So I'm not going to delve too much into the software. HTC Sense is probably one of the more popular um, skins out there for Android. And definitely HTC does a great job of this. I would say that it's showing its age a little bit here on this device and hopefully a revamp of this will come soon. As we know with HTC Sensation and the Evo, Evo 3D, they're going to get the new version of HTC, HTC Sense. So hopefully that May, may be able to be ported down here onto the HTC Thunderbolt, so this doesn't, this doesn't stay, this, this doesn't become old with the software. But um, what it, this big, the big selling point with this here is obviously the 4G LTE speed. It's getting that really close to, you know, really faster than DSL speed out there. And instead of doing a bunch of speed tests, we've seen those speed tests before. You've seen that in other reviews. I'm actually just going to show you kind of how how it really works and what are, what you're going to mainly use it for. So when I was actually using it with, um, I was actually using it with Dropbox and I, I was uploading some videos and pictures that I took with the device. You can see here that it just shoots right up really, really fast. Pictures and video upload fast. You can see the pictures just kind of just knocking out one by one by one by one. They're just going up there. And then when it came to video, and this was some HD video and some non-HD video that I uploaded with it, you also saw that same type of speed just kind of just go up there. It's not as fast as sort of the picture shot up there, but you can definitely see that the speed does, does you can see the speed with 4G LT is definitely in there. 
So with the 4G speeds, the great hardware on here, how well does it stack up? The HTC Thunderbolt is a great piece of hardware with 4G LTE built into it, mobile hotspot features, and the ability with 4G to not only talk but surf at the same time as well too, a feature that a lot of other GSM phones have that's pretty much a first coming to Verizon here. This is definitely a, a, a phone to definitely consider if you're in the market for a new phone. Now, would I say get it right now? I would hold off and wait just a little bit just because there's a lot of other 4G devices coming out so you might want to wait to have a nice selection to compare between all of them and I also think the price will drop in us a little bit. I think it's $250 right now. It's probably going to drop when some of those other phones come out there. I'd like to see this drop by about 50 bucks. I think $199 is a really good price point for this particular phone here. Also with 4G speeds, you notice we didn't do a speed net test because for one thing, every other reviewer has done that and it's, it kind of varies based on market. I'm in my market, which is New England market, the 4G speeds can be a lot different from where you are and all of your viewers are all across the country, some of you are all across the world, so it, it would definitely vary and it wouldn't be necessarily a very fair comparison. Also, I think right now with not a lot of 4G devices out right now, you got a lot of MiFi devices, um, broadband cards, and this is pretty much the only smartphone, and you do have some tablets and stuff coming and some other phones coming and more devices coming. I think once those are on the network and we have more people on it, we're going to see it slow down just a little bit. I don't think it's going to slow down a whole lot, but just a little bit. It was just like when Verizon had 3G. I had one of the first 3G phones that came out on Verizon's network, the LG VX8000 for you, for you guys wondering. And I had above spec speeds on there, clearly above spec speeds. And then as time went on and more people got on it, it slowed down a little bit. I still had great 3G speeds and it was still fast, but you can notice that a lot of people on the network and it just came down a little bit. So. That's inevitably going to happen with 4G, but I, I definitely you know recommend if you're going to get a data device and you want great fast speed on your phone, 4G LTE is definitely the way to go if you're on a Verizon wireless network. Overall, I think this is a great phone, and I definitely have to give it a thumbs up here. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com, reminding you to um, subscribe to our YouTube page here, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. And uh, check out the written review. All the links to that stuff are in the description, in the show notes, also with our written review. And always remember to live your tech world high definition.